In this video, we're going to look at uh, the derivation of the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is somewhat complicated, but it's important to know that it's not just something that a group of mathematicians sat down and were like, OK, what's the best way that we can torture students? And then they came up with this. That's not true at all. Actually, it's supposed to make our lives easier, if you can believe that. So in order to know how to derive the quadratic formula, you do have to know completing the square. So if you haven't yet done completing the square, this video might be a little bit nonsensical. Um, so make sure you know how to use completing the square first, and then uh, this will make much more sense. OK, so the quadratic formula, we're going to start with a quadratic equation where we have it set equal to 0. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And the quadratic formula is just a formula that we can plug uh, a, b, and c into that will then tell us our solutions. So in order to get x by itself, we are going to use completing the square. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract c from both sides. That will give me ax squared plus bx is equal to negative c. The next thing that I need to do if I'm going to do completing the square, I can't have a coefficient besides 1. So I need to factor out an a from these two terms. So I'm going to factor out a. That's going to leave me with x squared plus b over ax. I'm going to leave a little gap here since we're about to complete the square equals negative c. <clears throat> now what I need to do is I need to complete the square. In order to complete the square, I'm going to start here where I have b over a times x. I know that this is double the root that I'm looking for. So half of this would be b over 2a. And then I need this to be its square, which would be plus b squared over 4a squared. Now, I can't just willy-nilly add something that didn't previously exist to one side of an equation. I need to do the same thing to both sides. But I didn't really add this to both sides because it got multiplied by a. So what I really added to this side was b squared over 4a plus b squared over 4a. So I'm just going to add it to both sides. All right, so now from here, I'm going to write this. This will be a times x plus the root b over 2a squared equals negative c plus b squared over 4a. OK, now I need to get the square by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by a. Um, what I should also probably do, what will, might make my life easier, is to just go ahead and create this uh, just combine these to be 1, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So instead of negative c, I'm going to put negative c over 1. And then if I'm going to add these, I would need a denominator that matches, so I need to multiply this by 4a, and multiply this by 4a. Okay, so what would that give me? This would give me 4ac, which is negative, plus b squared over 4a. Okay, great. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a. When I divide both sides by a, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to add another factor of a to the denominator. So I'm just going to make this a squared. This will cancel with this. Then whew, we're getting there. We're getting there. We have x plus b over 2a squared equals. Now, just for the sake of the fact that this is what the formula looks like, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip flop those two and just make it b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 4a squared. OK, so this is what I have so far. What I need to do to get x by itself, I need to take the square root of both sides. Remember, when I take the square root of the non-variable side, I do need to include my positive or negative. Positive or negative. The square and the square root cancel. So I have x plus b over 2a is equal to um, what we can do here is we can put the plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac in the numerator and then have a separate uh, radical in the denominator. The denominator actually is a perfect square. Um, so we can actually rewrite that. It's b, b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then if I take the square root of 4a squared, it's 2a. One more step. We need to get x by itself. It's being added by b over 2a. There's great news here. The great news is that here I have a fraction with a denominator of 2a, and here I have a fraction of, with a denominator of 2a. So that's good because they already have the same denominator. So when I bring it to the other side, 
we can just combine the numerators since they both have that denominator of 2a. Again, for the sake of the formula, I'm just going to put this piece first because we usually see this piece first, negative b, right? Because I subtracted it from both sides and I put the negative in the numerator so that way the denominators were both 2a, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is the quadratic formula. It's really important that you know it, you know it correctly, um, and you know what a, b, and c represent. They represent the coefficients and the constant. If you need help memorizing it, I strongly urge you to find YouTube videos of other people singing songs about the quadratic formula because you will not be disappointed.